Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking to Real Housewives of Potomac, season seven, episode four. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So first I'm gonna start off by saying this episode really didn't have a lot going on. So this review is probably gonna be another quick one. Um, I did see something that was interesting online. So take a listen. I don't fuck with that woman because I don't fuck with that woman. And it's not because she got some tea on me. I want you guys to watch. And I know you all will agree when the truth comes out that you wouldn't fuck with her either or anyone like that. I just say stay tuned. Honey, now listen, we all know who she was talking about. She does not F with Sharice. She is talking about Sharice. Well, Sharice replies back and says, oh my, the delusion continues. Poor thing. You look a little parched or perhaps a few too many might explain this nonsense. Listen, Sharice can kick rocks. Girl, listen, you are trying desperately to have a storyline and to use Karen for it. We haven't seen you in how long? The least you could do is come with the storyline and stop trying to use Karen. Karen is not here for this and she's not going to allow you to perpetrate this storyline. I don't give a damn if Karen did sleep around on Ray. I am absolutely positive that Sharice has no concrete proof, but I am interested to see how this goes forward. I do want to say that I have never been a fan of Sharice. I've always thought that she was dry. I thought that she always acted as if she was better than the rest of the girls and she could really just go on and go. I'm not interested in Sharice at all. And I don't know why Bravo keeps giving her these chances over and over and over again. Get down in the comments, you guys, and let me know what you think. When the episode starts off, we see Wendy with her family, and they are out. You know, the boys are practicing their soccer. Her daughter is there, little Cameron. And, oh, my gosh, has was anybody else surprised to see how much she has grown? The time has flown by. I just feel like Wendy just had her. This little girl is adorable. You know, Wendy has some beautiful children. She talked to Eddie a little bit about the restaurant and you know the thing that I appreciate about Eddie is Eddie heard her out you know he listened to her and her ideas regarding the restaurant but he made some very valid points first of all we know that her hair is falling out due to stress second of all she's already told us about how hectic and crazy her schedule is the fact that she has a full-time job as a professor at a college she's also during her correspondent position. She also has her candle business and now you're trying to open up a restaurant. You're also a mom and a wife and a real housewife. That is a lot going on. I don't think that Wendy's gonna be able to do all of these things. Yes, us women, we usually can do anything we put our mind to. We can multitask, we can juggle a lot of different hats. The problem with this is she doesn't need any additional stress in her life. She's already got enough. Wendy, slow down. She invited everyone and their children to a family fun day. Okay. Didn't ask me. Mm -hmm. She was like, them kids. Basically. Hey, I, you're a world class bench player. Oh. <laughs> and that's how uncomfortable she felt. The Chris that cooked them dinner. Yes. And Giselle told me this that night, like on the ride home. Why didn't you tell Candace when it happened? If well, it was a big deal. I don't know. Damn. They trying to get Chris. Call Wendy and tell her you want to take her kids to the family fun day. I am 99% sure Wendy is going to tell me to go to hell and then tell me to tell Robin to go to the hell underneath that. People who are addicted to drugs, when they start using, that's when their maturity stops until they're sober. Are we yeah. playing football? We're having relays. Yeah. Robin is pretty regular. I could have set this one up too. Well, I thought you said you were divorcing. Oh yeah, we're not together. We're not together. He's my PP, What's the parenting PP? partner. Uh, oh. Candace <laughs> just texted me. She just texted me that we need to find. So. <laughs> so it's not about the kids. 
kids. <laughs> no mother is going to leave their children to go with someone else, especially to an event that they were not wanted at. And Wendy wasn't invited. <laughs> this is not okay. Why is that not okay? It's just the kids. I said, Candace, can you take on an auntie role, reach out to Wendy, say, Wendy, I got your kids, I'll bring them, and Wendy declines. You should have been bigger than that. Send your children with someone else? Why don't you send your children with someone else, Robin, please? No, it makes no sense. Just for the call. I'm going to go to the car. I'm good. I'll let y'all know. I'll text you. Have fun. She doesn't like me. Yes. How are you? Hi, Grace. Giselle is invited to find the very blackest part of my ass and kiss it. Candace, you have come, honey. Hi. You've spoken to everyone here but me, OK? You're taking this too far, sweetie. Hi, Jane. Ah. My clothes is to me today. Oh. She probably should have like two more before she decided to divorce his ass. Check one, check two, check three, check four. Let's go. So, but Michael got a vasectomy because he doesn't want ha to have any illegitimate children run around. Okay. I wouldn't say bisexual. Is she pansexual? I don't she know is. what I honestly. I'm you know, I agree with Wendy. I think it's absolutely horrible how Robin didn't invite Wendy and the kids. Even if you don't like Wendy, still invite the children. You don't have to be best friends with Wendy. All you have to do is greet Wendy and when her and the kids show up and go on about your business. The same way when Candace showed up, she didn't give Giselle the time of day. She went on about her business. That's what Robin could have done and allow all the children to be there together. Juan telling Robin that he thinks that Chris should apologize to Giselle. Hell no, hell no. Giselle went in that room with Chris. Chris didn't force her to stay in that room. Not at all. And she even admitted that the door was wide open. And she also admitted that when she asked him to go check to see if they were ready for her, he left and did that. He never said anything wrong to her. He didn't touch her inappropriately. None of that. Chris does not owe Giselle an apology, in my opinion. Robin and Giselle are just hell bent on making Wendy pay for how she reacted to them last season. Last season, they made it their business, their business to degrade this woman and talk bad about her because she was confident after her plastic surgery. And now because she told them to hell off, which they deserved, they deserve to be told off. Now they're all pissed off and being absolutely disrespectful to her. Listen, you guys are holding grudges. You started it. You called for her. She showed up and you didn't appreciate it. Move forward. Move on. You know what was so funny? Robin was so hell bent on excluding Wendy and her children. Her own boyfriend didn't show the hell up. I said, oh, karma is a real bitch. Then for her to say that, I'll just have Candace pick up Wendy's kids. And Juan agreed with that. What the hell? Since when does Candace watch Wendy's kids, number one? Number two, I agree with Wendy. What mom is saying, sure, um, you can come pick my kids up and take them somewhere that I wasn't invited with people who don't F with me. No one's mom is doing that. No one would ever do that. You are not picking my kids up. You don't normally pick them up. I don't think so. No, ma'am. I don't know how Robin was raised, but no, ma'am. And then I was really upset when Giselle was actually a manning Robin talking to Karen, talking about you weren't there. Giselle, have a seat. It was just last season when you were telling Karen that you appreciate how she was always nice to your children, even though she don't really mess with you. But you want to co-sign Robin's behavior? No, ma'am. And you know what, Robin? It's not about the kids. Did you win something? I mean, she was saying it and smiling like she had won something or she proved something. What you proved is what you proved is that you're extremely petty. Um, I can say that the family fun day was a really good idea, but it was very underwhelming. The planning was not that great. And Mia making that comment that Robin is a regular person. Mia had a lot to say in her confessionals. And all I have to say to that is, Mia, the reunion is coming, honey.
Giselle makes this big to do about Candace not talking to her, not speaking to her, not saying hello. But weren't you the same one who didn't want Wendy to speak to you at the spring fling celebration of life taco party? When she tried to say hello to you, you didn't want any of that action. But you want Candace to say hello to you. Girl gone. Mia in the car with Gordon. She does say that she had a conversation with her aunt and she talked to her aunt about her mom's past drug use and how her mother's age is probably stunted from the time that she was, you know, addicted to her drugs. And I thought, that's really smart. I never thought about that. And I would definitely like to research that a little bit. I don't know if that's 100% true, but it sounds like it could be. But one thing I did appreciate is her and her mom's relationship seems to be getting much better and they seem to be on stable ground. And I'm really happy to see that. Also, Gordon asked Mia, has she talked to Candace? I guess he was waiting for her to have a conversation with Candace about Chris allegedly staring at her at the spring fling celebration of life taco party. That man does not give a damn about her. Now, one thing that I thought was weird is Mia was out on social media. Chris had made a post that said, not cool at all. Talking about Mia saying that, you know, he was staring at her and she replies, nope, I felt stares for sure, but not in an inappropriate manner. Honestly felt insecure because I was so skinny, pale and frail from being sick. Nothing but love and respect for you and Candy Gal. So sorry for even saying it. Blame it on the margarita. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That is straight up bullshit. You knew exactly what you were saying when you were sitting there with Robin having that one damn margarita. You knew you were implying that this man was looking at you in a sexual way. Stop the bullshit. You were not saying that you were insecure because you felt skinny and frail. No, ma'am. You were at that party trying to be sexy and you were sitting at that table acting like you were God's gift to the men. Girl, get the hell out of here with that lie. You know, Jacqueline shows up and she says that she's there with her PP, which turns out to be parent partner. And I thought that was really cute. I like that. But I also noticed that Giselle was all up in this woman's business. And I said to myself, Jacqueline, mm -mm. what you don't want to do is allow Giselle to know any of your business regarding you and your husband. No, ma'am. Jacqueline, of course, is Mia's friend. And you know Mia, Mia is free with all of her business. She doesn't give a damn. She'll tell you about it. Well, it turns out that so will Jacqueline. So anyway, Jacqueline lets the ladies know that her and her husband have participated in a few threesomes, you know, even though now that they're going through a divorce and they are just PPs, parent partners, she doesn't do that anymore. Ashley says, well, are you bi? She says, no, I don't know what I am, but Mia says she is. First of all, Mia, you don't have any right to out anybody. You have absolutely no right to out anybody. But since you did, does anybody think that maybe Mia and Jacqueline might be a little closer than regular friends? I mean, remember last episode, she was saying that she was Gordon's second wife. I don't know. I feel like there was some threesomes in their life. I'm just saying this is I don't know. This is just me, you know, in my opinion, all of this is alleged. I don't know these people. Ashley saying that Michael was getting a vasectomy that day. That was something else. I thought it was a little weird too, for a couple reasons. One reason is because she told them that that day of the family fun day, that Michael was getting a vasectomy. And then it said 14 hours later, when the statement came out, she was trying to call Michael, but he was in Vegas. And now I don't know a lot of people that's had the vasectomy, but most people who have vasectomies, they're not out on a plane flying and going to Las Vegas the next day. They're usually at home in bed for two or three days, I think, because, you know, that's a delicate area. But anyway, Mia makes the comment that, he doesn't want to have any illegitimate children running around out here. And you know what? I have to agree uh, with Mia. But while we're talking about Ashley, because I'm all over the place and I am all out of order 
and out of sequence from how the show went. But Ashley met up with her publicist at her house and she was reading this lifetime statement that she had wrote about their di coming divorce, about their separation and divorce. And I said, girl, what kind of Hallmark Lifetime movie is this? And look, honey, listen, it was beautiful, cinematic genius as the Bravo editors added all of Michael's greatest disappointments. I said, oh, wow, not the disappointments, the letdowns, the cheating, the butt grabbing, not all of this while you're reading this beautiful statement about your love. Yes, I love the Bravo editors. They work overtime. Now, when Karen found out that Robin had not invited Wendy and the kids, I stand behind Karen 100%. That is crazy as hell. You are not sending your kids with somebody else into a situation where the people don't like you, where you were not invited. Robin, are you and Juan going to send your kids it's over to Wendy's knowing that you acted an ass to her? No. Absolutely not. I don't know why she didn't think that. Would I send my kids off to be with Wendy after the, after we've had these arguments? No. But one thing that I cannot agree with with Karen is throwing out all that good chicken. Okay, she says that she found out that she's allergic to the chicken. Now my thing is, gosh, I hope I'm never become allergic to the chicken because I like a little chicken tacos, chicken salad. You know, goodness gracious, how would I live without a nice buffalo chicken dip? Anyway, the thing is, is why throw out all that chicken? Couldn't you have found some way to donate somewhere to give it to someone less fortunate or something? I just don't appreciate throwing out all that good chicken. Now, listen, Karen did run the hell up out of there when Sharice got there. But in Karen's defense, when she got there, she did say that she was hanging in there when they asked her how she was doing. And she said something about her allergies was acting up. So I don't know. I don't know. I think that Karen is very well aware that Sharice is trying to use her for a storyline and she is not going to have it. So every chance she gets, she's just going to walk away and leave Sharice just sitting there being useless, getting a check on this show. My goodness, did you guys see when Giselle said hello to Dean? Oh my gosh, I watched that about seven times. I just kept rewinding. I said, oh gosh, he is on to you. Out of the mouth of babes. Kids know when somebody is no good. He knows you talk bad about his daddy. Anyway, you guys, I can't remember anything else. I don't know. This was just a quick review. This episode did not have a lot going on and I was all over the place. So you have to excuse me for that. But anyway, you guys get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.